Okay, in this video we're checking out the new uh, Turnigy Evolution Pro. Uh, this is just uh, an update to the Evolution that they uh, were selling for a long time, and I usually use this radio for many, many months. It was my one of my favorite radios, and of course I stopped using it. I'm using the Jumper now, but uh, mainly because it's only Fly Sky, and that hasn't changed. Uh, the new Evolution Pro is only still the Fly Sky first, or sorry, second generation protocol, I believe. Uh, they did make a few modifications. I think the uh, a few of the big ones are mo mainly in the design, the physical design of it. For example, they've added a lanyard hook here, which is an on the version one over here, and they have this switch in the front here instead. They have a momentary switch here, so if you want to use that for say pre-arming, that is now on this one that was not on the first one. And then the power button is here. The gimbals are pretty much the same as before, although they in this version the springs are a little bit stiffer. Um, yeah, they do feel a tad bit stiffer to me. So that's probably true. I believe the switches are in the back are the same. Uh, you have a three position switch here and here. The, the buzzer, the beeper, is a little bit louder in the version 2, or the pro version. And then they adjusted the where, where the screen is. So you can see here, eh, it's going to be hard to see. Basically, the angle of the screen is a little bit lower here in the Pro version versus the first version. See, it's a little bit higher here. And that is uh, mainly to accommodate the pinchers. Apparently, having the screen a little bit of a lower angle like that is better for pinchers. That's what they told me. I don't pinch, and I don't know how to fly pinching, so I can't tell you if that makes any difference whatsoever. Uh, but that is the reason why they adjusted the angle of the screen down. Um, the same batteries are in, in here as before, so uh, it does the same USB charging. Uh, the same lithium-ion batteries, it charges via USB, and they're not user-replaceable unless you open it up. Okay, so for the rest of the changes, I'm going to, have to show you the firmware. So let's see, power this up, and this does have newer firmware. The For the interface and everything on touchscreen is fairly similar to the first version, which is why I'm not really doing a full review here. So if you want to see the review of this guy, I did a lot of videos on this one, so I'll put that playlist down in the description. You guys can watch all those videos. I'm mainly just going to cover the differences between the two radios, or for the newer version here. So the version of the firmware here is dated, I think, December 2018. You can hear the buzzers a bit louder than before. Uh, this does have haptic feedback. I don't believe the first version had that. This does have range test mode here. Oops, uh, that's not it. This one here uh, does give you RSSI and you can go into range test mode or reduce power and it gives you this beeping. So you can do a range test. That wasn't in the firmware in the non-pro version. The uh, stick calibration here, is, or stick adjust is what they're calling it is accessible. Now you don't have to go into uh, the uh, secret menu to do the stick calibration. You can do that here and then get back to the main menu. Uh, there is more model memory now uh, versus the non-pro version. Uh, you can now add up to 20 models instead of the limit was 5 on the non-pro version. The pro version gives you up to 20 models available. And then this firmware does give you the option to disable the RF chip in here when you're in sim mode. So if you plug in your USB into your computer and use this for a simulator, it's not transmitting any signals, RF noise, or anything like that out. The chip is actually turned off. And then here on the main screen, it does display the transmitter battery voltage as a number instead of just the uh, battery bar on the previous firmware version and the receiver or the telemetry coming back from the battery uh, on the uh, receivers on the quad is coming back here um, just as a battery bar. Now I believe uh, this has had the same screens as on the previous firmware version. It still has the same three screens. So you should have this main screen here. You have, a you have some timers here that you can set. That That's the same as before. That hasn't changed. You can swipe over and you can get uh, telemetry here on the one this one screen here. It uh, gives you trans, uh, the transmitter voltage and also the receiver voltage. I think RSSI and stuff will come out here as well. And if you swipe over one more, then it gives you the uh, the channel uh, outputs. And I think this is uh, just shows you yeah, eight channels here. 
Okay, so then uh, I think that pretty much covers all the firmware and, and the physical changes. And obviously, um, this does not come with the cover here. This is the cover that the first version comes in. It obviously only fits the first version, does not fit the second version. Now, they're not including the cover uh, to save costs, so they're going to sell us at a little cost. I believe that's what they told me. And you see, this just does not fit. Yeah, well, yeah, it does not fit. So, uh, the cover will be sold separately if you guys, that's one of the selling features of the first version. If you want the cover, they will sell that as an accessory uh, for those of you guys that actually want that. In terms of RF performance, seems about the same to me. Didn't do any like major range chasing or anything like that. I will show you some flight footage where I fly around at a park I normally fly around. I can get, you know, the typical um, 100, 200 meters that I was getting. On this guy, the first version. Um, beyond that, you know, I wouldn't recommend going much further. Uh, I was using a newer receiver that I wasn't using on the old version here. That 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 receiver, this uh, the the uh, Flip 14 Plus, that has RSSI built in on one of the channels, and that receiver was not available or was not even being sold when I was using the old version. So I can't really do an apples to apples comparison in terms of RSSI because I never had any RSSI available to me on my OSD on the first version because receivers weren't available back then. But there is RSSI in the flight demo for this guy. While I'm flying around, you'll kind of see where I'm, where I'm sitting and uh, where I'm kind of flying all over the park. It does bounce around. That's uh, you know a little bit, little bit lower than I would expect, say, like say to, for a free sky receiver. I didn't have any fail saves or anything like that, no lockouts. Um, so I feel like this is fine for your typical park flying, you know, maybe up to 300 meters away, but I don't think I would trust it beyond that. Um, that's about it for the radio. That's all I've got to say. It seems to be pretty similar to the first version now. I, I did notice that when they made the change here with the screen angle, I don't know if it's because I haven't been using the Evolution for a while. I just feel like Maybe I'm just not used to the shape anymore. Um, I don't think the angle of the screen has anything to do with it. Perhaps it's the stiffer gimbals, because I really like loose gimbals on the jumper. Um, yeah, I didn't feel as comfortable with this as I did when I was flying with the first version, but you know, I haven't flown this in a long time as well, so keep that in mind. There's nothing, that's just a personal thing. I don't think it's not really a negative knock on the radio itself. I think otherwise it performs just as fine as the first version along and of course now now they made all the little additions and improvements here for the pro version uh, and especially for you guys that are pinchers and maybe for those of you guys that do fly the fly sky second generation protocol and have all those receivers and or are using the first evolution uh, you may want to check this guy out so i'll put a link in the description i think they sold out hobby king and yeah uh, if you have any questions let me know and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.